five reasons why you should have a Seiko in your collection. But first, I'm not a watch expert. I'm just a bit of a watch nerd. So if, if you've got anything to disagree with me about, any anything that you go down into the comments and put what you want. Whilst you're down there, why not subscribe, like, and ding that bell icon so you never miss another video. It would make me very, very happy. And I like being happy, happy's good. Seiko, people know, I've made no effort to hide the fact it's my favorite brand. Number one. When you think of Seiko, you don't think of history, but Seiko actually has an amazing bloody history. It was actually founded in 1881, which makes it significantly older than Rolex, which was founded in 1904. And people think of Rolex's heritage all the time. So Seiko has heritage, much of it. It was founded obviously in Japan, in Tokyo, by Kintaro Hattori. And Seiko actually means house of precision in Japanese. And we're gonna talk about precision next. But Seiko heritage, very, very strong. And they wanted and aspired to play with the big boys in the watch industry, the guys in Switzerland, the guys in the UK, the guys in Germany. They wanted to join them. And that's what they managed to do. So point number two on Seiko. Seiko's changed the watch industry several times. Seiko came along with the quartz technology and for hundreds of years, the Swiss and before them, the British had been running what were called observatory competitions. It was essentially a big competition in the watch industry of who could be the most accurate because it mattered. It mattered a lot of who could have the most accurate watch. Patek Philippe went, just loads of brands just fought tooth and nail to have this coveted prize every single year. In 1967, the two constituent companies that formed Seiko, Daini Sekosha and Sua Sekosha, please massacre me in the comments if I got that wrong, but they play second and third, respectively, in this competition, <laughs> which was mental. They weren't from any brands that were known for accuracy, they were from Seiko. They weren't from a country that was known for watchmaking. They were from Japan. It's like, what are you doing here? And then the next year, um, ooh, ooh. yeah, they went to the Geneva Observatory Trials and they had, how many watches do you think they had in the top 10, Terry? Four. Seven watches in the top 10. Oh my God. So in 1972, following successive years of humiliation, numerous top switch Swiss watch brands went to um, the industry minister and just went, listen, we need to stop this. The Japanese are sweeping the board. The guy rightfully said, the guy who was running it rightfully said, I thought the point of the competition was for the best to win. If the Japanese are the best, it's right that they're winning, catch up. So then the Swiss threatened to boycott it because they were angry at Japan. <laughs> and then the observatory just suspended the competitions and they were never, never brought back. If anything, replaced with the Grand Prix de Horologie de Genève. I'm terrible at saying that, we just call it the GPHG. So these observatory competitions were replaced with the GPHG, which is a lot more subjective, so that the Japanese couldn't just come in and sweep it every year. Everyone nowadays knows the saying, if you want accuracy, buy quartz. And Seiko's responsible for that. So well done, Seiko. Point number three. So that's price. Obviously, if you want a cheap mechanical watch, most of the time you're gonna go for Seiko, or you're gonna go for a watch which you don't realize is a Seiko, but it is a Seiko. For example, you might go for an Orient. They're known for amazing, really good quality, cheap watches. You might go for a Seiko 5, which is obviously Seiko, but Seiko 5s you can pick up for like 100 quid, which have a very acceptable level of waterproofing, have mechanical movements, have date date complications on all of them. They're amazing. You might go for a Loris, which is of course quartz, but they've got offerings across the board in the budget end. And I just think that's amazing. Point number four is if you want a watch that costs a hundred pounds, hundred dollars, Seiko's got you. That was point number three. They have an amazing budget entry, but they have watches at every single price range going up to tens and tens of thousands. It's insane. I've tried on a Platinum Ishii 2 and Bond Street in London 
and it was amazing. £55,000. That watch is simple, it's got an enamel dial, it's a three-hand watch, doesn't even have the date, but it is perfection. It's a dress watch and it is perfection, it is beautiful. And that's got spring drive. Like, I won't explain spring drive in this video, that might be a different video, but it's incredible. So if you want a budget watch, you can get a Seiko 5. If you want something higher, you can get a Seiko Prospects, which has some really amazing pro-level features, but not may maybe not quite the accuracy you expect. If you want something that's a step up, King Seiko. If you want a step up again, Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko have an incredible offering of quartz, of automatics, of high beats, of spring drive. It's incredible. And a whole suite of different styles as well. Dress watches, sports watches. They've got G amazing GMTs, divers. They've just brought out the Tentagraph in the past year or so. All of them look absolutely stunning. And then a step up, already talked about it, Creedor, which is little skunk works on the side of Seiko, which just, just makes unbelievable stuff. And I don't think there's any other watchmakers, luxury watchmakers that can say they cater for every single price point, hence why you need a Seiko, because no matter how much you have to spend, there's no reason not to get one. There will be one for you. Reason five. I've talked about different types and price points of watches, but no matter how you like your watches powered, they've got something for you. On the budget end, they've obviously got quartz watches, and they've even got some Grand Seikos with quartz. They, they've got Kinetic, they've got Solar, and they've got both manual wind, mechanical, they've got automatic mechanical, but if you want something truly spectacular, which arguably, we've talked about Seiko changing the watch industry once, but they've actually changed it a second time with Spring Drive. Spring Drive's technology is unparalleled in the watch industry. There's nothing like it. I said I wasn't gonna get into it, but in essence, it's an automatically powered watch. So it's got a rotor weight, but then it's got a quartz regulator. So it's an automatic watch. You don't need to change the battery, but it generates its own electricity rather than having a battery. And because it's got a quartz regulator, Seiko can rate it for 15 seconds a month accuracy. And that was the initial version of it, which is something like 20 years old now. On the new versions of Spring Drive, that's cut down to a couple seconds a month. And that's on an automatically powered watch. Seiko have absolutely killed the game there, just like they did several decades ago. The spring drive technology, I think, took them 27 years and three development cycles to actually make, but it's absolutely unbelievable. So, um, in essence, that's what that's five reasons why you need a Seiko. And obviously, we're gonna get loads of comments about, oh, but on the low end, they've got loads of QC issues, and yeah, um, I can't really argue with some of the QC issues they have. I haven't seen any of them. I haven't seen any QC issues. I've heard about a lot, but I haven't seen any. So until I do, I'm gonna fight Seiko's corner. Seiko, I love you. You are my favorite watch company. You want a Grand Seiko, don't you? I do want a Grand Seiko. For now, I'm very happy with this, but I've even got a review of this. And it's on an Artem Strap, so you can go watch that review. It will be our last video that came out. Maybe two links in the description? Two, yeah. Two links in the description, one for the review for my Seiko Prospects GMT, and one for my review of Artem Loopless Sailcloth Straps. I hope you enjoyed these vi this video, guys. That was five reasons why you need a Seiko in your collection. As always, if you disagree with me, go down to the comments and tell me how stupid I am. And whilst you're down there, why not like, subscribe, and ding that bell icon so you never miss another video. And don't forget, JD's and gentlemen, to watch yourselves.